Hey, what's up guys? How's it going? So I wanted to go ahead and kind of go over what the kind of setup you need to have and what kind of stuff you would need to be a tier three trap, not a tier four trap. And, and I'm not saying this as like a solo trap. I'm saying like a rally trap, right? So if you wanted to be a rally trap, you had nothing but tier three and tier two. Okay. The approximate numbers here, obviously you're going to deal with a huge and I mean, huge problem with morale. Okay, there's no guarantee that you're not going to take reds doing this. But the approximate numbers to do this is to do about 5 million or so tier 3 across. All right, now I say that because you can, if you wanted to, go into two unit types just to be safe. But essentially, what you're going to do, all right, is you're going to build up an enormous amount of tier 3 to counteract the amount of tier 4 that they come having at you, okay? Now, obviously, for more than one reason, okay, this is more experimental than it is anything else because anytime you start dealing with targets that are an enormous amount, right? So if, let's say, I'm dealing with a Mythic Champ player, we're not talking gold tier yet, we're not talking anything like that yet, all right? But I, I'm saying that 5 million tier 3 at the minimum is about 26 million strength, all right? That, in my opinion, should do more than what it should. I mean, really, just on that alone, you should be okay. Um, but because of healing reasons, all right, you should, in my opinion, do about a million or so. Um, you can do two million if you want to feel safer. Frankly, I don't think anyone's going to try this, but you might. Um, but I would probably, if I were you anyway, I would build a million at least of tier two across. And that's going to put you at about 28 million strength overall. Now, of course, if you want to know where I'm getting these numbers, I'll put them in the comments section in the description. Um, but of course, uh, needless to say, right? You know, if that is the comp you want to do, that is basically what you need to have in order to do a tier three trap. If you are doing a tier four trap, okay, and then these are the different kind of compositions that I've seen that have been done, all right? Like for example, the comp that I'm using right now is 1.1 million and then 4 million tier two. All right, now that is to say, of course, you can't do it with more tier two, like you could do 6 million tier two and have less tier four and vice versa. You don't really need any tier three. I just put in tier three in here just so that I can send solos. Um, but essentially, right, if, if you're wanting to be a trap account, the one thing that you have to make sure you do is you have to cut down as much might as you can possible. I obviously don't do that very well, and I know some of you guys out there are like, well, you're not a rally trap. You don't have the right amount of might. You're not wrong. Um, so I will have a video on baiting tactics coming up here pretty soon, so be on, on the lookout for that because I'm going to kind of show you guys how you could potentially get away with eating rallies even at 600 million might, because as much as people like to believe, it is not impossible. Uh, it can be done, it just needs to, you just have to work a little bit harder than most people would under those circumstances. Having that said though, all right, um, the next step in building these traps is that you must, and I mean must, have all of your infirms completely done. All right, that means you need to have all of these to be infirms. In other words, you need 16 infirmaries and they all need to be level 25 after you've built all your troops. Now, the reason being is because obviously you want to be able to heal your troops after a rally goes off. We will discuss doubles and triples in another video because that's an entirely different problem altogether. Um, but for the most part, at least in regards to single rallies, what you will want to do is the common strategy here is that you're going to essentially, you know, I'm going to say pick a hero that looks like a free to play hero. And I'm just saying that because it's usually easier. Uh, and then I would wear either research gear, familiar gear, monster hunting gear, or construction gear, or gather gear. Why? Because essentially it makes you look like a target, it makes you look like you're not online. The second step, okay, is that essentially what you're going to do is you're going to make your, sure you have at least 20 million in your bags. And you don't want to pop your food bags until the last 10 seconds of the rally. Or after, if you only get one rally. Obviously, this rule will change when double and triple rallies. Now, obviously, once you've actually done that, okay, what you'll do is essentially you'll wait and see what the rally is. You'll actually check and see what the gear of that player is. So, for example, if you do not know when you look up to somebody, view their profile. If you don't know right away whether this is construction gear, infantry gear, range gear, cab gear, or vice versa, I recommend you go to that workshop and you start studying your actual gear types. Otherwise, it's going to be a real nightmare. All right, the next thing. If you can, I would recommend getting a prison and getting it to level 30 and preferably uh, 30, 25. 
Um, because essentially what you're going to want out of this is you're going to want that to be done as soon as possible because essentially you can get a 30% attack boost from there. The next thing is you want to pop a 20% attack boost about close to the last 15 seconds of a rally if you can. Um, and essentially what you'll do, all right, is, and so to give you kind of an idea how this would work is if I'm down to the last 20 seconds of a rally, I'll have my food popped and then I will pop my attack boost and then swap gear in that fashion. And then I will either random to eat the march or I will uh, I will call it good with that. Now, obviously, when you're dealing with a smaller troop comp, you can deal with it a lot smaller. Um, what you'll do is you'll have to, in preparation of the rally, you'll actually have to have your buddies reinforce you. Um, and again, in case you're wondering, what exactly do I need to have and why? I can explain that in another video um, because that's going to go into the frontline and anti frontline discussion, which I can explain in greater detail in another video. All right, now, needless to say, um, what you also want to grab is you want to get Mole Shaman. And Mole Shaman is a pack three familiar. And the reason being is because you want to get his infirm capacity boost for 5%. Um, and then you also want to go into your research tree and you want to make sure that when you go down the army leadership tree You get bigger infirmary one um, Because essentially that just increases your infirm capacity to the point where you can have up to 716,000 troops and the recent update we actually have the wonder battles um, Research down here. We also have another t um, Total 7% we can add which can go up as high as 760k, but it might be even higher um, having that said, okay, it is an important thing to have a higher infirm capacity, and it's also incredibly important that you have a higher infirm healing speed. So in case you didn't know, it turns out that actually Strix is a back two familiar, if I'm not wrong. And, uh, you know, there's blood bag, and I'm currently upgrading this as I speak. Um, but those are things that I would definitely recommend focusing on as a rally trap if you're building up your account. Um, the other thing is gear. Now, a lot of people have asked me about this quite frequently. What gear do I need to have to be a rally trap? Now, I would say it doesn't really necessarily matter exactly what gear you have. What matters is what your stats are. In general, it is usually preferable, okay, that you're doing at least 400% or higher, okay? Now, you can manage a 350 or 380, okay, but in all honesty, I think 450 and higher is just that much better. If you can get it there, great. That means you've got to do a little bit of math, um, and in case you want to know, how do I know? Well, it's pretty straightforward, my friends. You gotta go to your workshop. You gotta go pull out that calculator. You gotta click on the item, and you gotta start looking. Now, of course, if you don't want to do this, then yeah, I know it sounds painful, but it is. Because uh, you also have to understand that, yes, you need to know what those rares are and how many you're going to need. That's going to change the price of how much it's going to cost you to even get the gear as it is. But for what it's worth, you don't really need the gear, FYI. If you really don't want it, you don't really need it. But it's a big help. Um, it makes compositions on Mythic Chant players a lot easier. Now, that's not to say that you can't do a familiar carry you've seen me do it multiple times so this is by no means necessary it's just to help nothing more having that said though okay um this is the current gear that i'm wearing so i am using a frostwing greatsword a beast helm a firewall plate i use dragon's talon now i could have used the storm tacits i could have used a combination of champion pieces. There is nothing wrong with that. I even use Ambrosial Cups, and frankly, you could just as easily manage with Burning Scrolls or Light Rings, or even Cav Drums or Infantry Oils. There is nothing wrong with doing that. Just know that that is exactly why I chose these, because these are two type, basically more stats for your buck kind of pieces, and that's the only reason I'm wearing them. On the topic between Mitts versus the Codex, Okay, if you have a gold pair of mitts, they are better than a purple eternal codex. However, if your codex is gold and your mitts are gold, the codex is better. If you get your mythic version of a codex, a mythic version of a codex is better than a mythic version of the mitts. So in case you're wondering why do I wear gold mitts, that is why. Now, having that said, your talents, okay? This is arguably where you can make a lot of choices. And obviously, the more attack you have, the better. 
okay what i like to do is i increase my squad health by 50 but there's no reason that you can go down here and you could max out your infantry offense one range offense one and cav offense one there's nothing wrong with that that's entirely up to you i just simply chose that squad health two was going to make more sense for me now having that said all right if you've done everything i've suggested up to this point what does your military research need to look like if you're rally trapping arguably i think it needs to be 10 and i say that because frankly it is a pain if it isn't because <laughs> you gotta t you gotta imagine all right that the players that you're dealing with are probably on the maximum high end of stats and therefore if you can at least manage standard you're probably a little better off than if you didn't um, having that said though okay if you've done everything I've suggested up to this point all right the average tier 4 trap all right in case you're wondering what would that look like okay the average tier 4 trap that we've known and seen has worked in the past and always has is a 2 million across tier four and then two million across and gladiators what the magical number is is about 24 to 25 million strength now obviously you know i can play with these numbers however i want because frankly so long as i have those 24 to 25 million strength numbers i'm okay and that's really all you need if you don't understand needless to say just check the spreadsheet down below and look at it you'll know exactly what i mean when you see it now having that said all right if you have any more questions in regards to rally trapping, let me know in the comment section below, and I will see you guys next time.